It's totally my choice, and all that's possible now. It's kind of like service merchandise, if you remember that back in the 1980s. Service merchandise, but on steroids because of technology. All right, lastly, every party's got to have some Italians, right? I say that in jazz, partly because I am, if, I don't look it, but I actually am Italian. But actually I say it because Italians are the perfect analogy for a casino. Casinos, in my opinion, I've talked a lot of tech, but casinos, in my opinion, are the number one place that still celebrates the joy of why you come to a physical place, right? It's a very gracious experience. If you think about a casino, they actually have an entire role called host because they want you to feel like a welcome guest every time you enter their establishment. A friend of mine who actually introduced me to my wife said to me one time, and I'll never forget, he said, Chris, in the casino business, it's about gambling. We know we're going to take your money, but we can't evaluate our success based on how much of your money we take. We have to evaluate our success based on whether or not you had a good time. And so if you start to think about the future of retail ten, you know, five to 10 years out, the really the only differences between a physical and digital experience are one, what we talked about already with the guide shop concept, this idea of taxing, touching, feeling, trying things on, getting confidence in purchase. And then really two, as was mentioned this morning as well, the experiential aspects of, real, of retailing, the social aspects of enjoying shopping or being somewhere and creating memories with someone. And so as we look to the future of what's going to separate the haves from the have-nots in retail, it's really going to be about that. It's not going to be about how much a customer spent in our store on a given day, but whether or not they had a good time. 